first of all, I'd like to thank the Labour Party and Deputy Nash as well for facilitating this important discussion. Um, we're in the middle of a cost of living crisis. Inflation has leaped to 5.5%, a 21-year high. Families, and most especially the on fixed incomes are feeling this every day. Soaring energy prices, young families burdened with rents and incredibly expensive childcare costs, pensioners and disabled people unable to eat their homes, households depending on the fantastic work of food charities to get by, and women and children trapped in domestic violence due to the cost of housing. Our cost of housing is the highest in Europe. The cost of goods and services in Ireland is the second highest in Europe, and our fuel costs are the fourth highest in Europe. Ordinary people and families are struggling. Where is the government commitment to do better? Our spiralling cost of living starts early in life. Childcare costs are amongst the highest in Europe also. Many families are paying more on childcare than mortgages. Families in Denmark and Germany are paying a fraction of this. Ireland spends just 0.3% of GDP on early years care and education, which is well below the UNICEF recommended benchmark of 1%. Education is anything but free. Annually, it costs over 1,300 to put a child through primary education, over 2,000 for secondary, and over 12,000 for college, according to research by Zurich. That is over 70,000 across a young person's education, and these costs keep rising. At the other end of life, the situation is equally challenging. Before the budget, the government knew that the pension had fallen in purchasing power by 10 euro and 24 cent since 2019. And with rising prices, the disgracefully low five euro increase has already been eaten up. Fuel poverty is a major issue for older people. We all know about pensioners that are going to bed in early <coughs> evening to stay warm, our families having to choose between food and energy bills. The government's 100 euro credit for energy bills is a limited intervention that will provide only minor temporary relief to those in need. Cost of living is even higher for disabled people. The government's own recent cost of disability report revealed that people with disabilities face up to 12,300 extra costs annually on transport, fuel, equipment, aids, medical expenses, and so much more. It's no wonder we have one of the highest rates of poverty and social exclusion in the EU for disabled people. Families of children with disabilities are consistently failed by the state to provide proper education and therapeutic measures. Those with the means to pay for it privately do, and those who cannot afford it are literally left on waiting lists. The Ombudsman's report for um, criticising personal transport uh, supports described the available schemes as inadequate, unfair and inequitable. This failure increases social isolation while also reducing employment opportunities. There is a need for targeted social and health interventions to enable disabled people to live independent lives. And finally, in the limited time I have, food prices are rising. That hits all households and we're seeing more families have to turn to food charities. And somehow, while food prices are rising, primary producers are not making more. Farmers, inshore fishers and small producers are barely getting by. There is no such thing as cheap food. We need to have a serious conversation in this country about food policy. We need a food system that provides affordable and healthy food while ensuring producers can make a living. A more equitable and sustainable approach can benefit all producers and consumers if we had the political will.